the conference over to Mr. Ankur Periwar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, yeah, hi. Good afternoon, friends, and uh, welcome to Lakshmi Organic Industries uh, Q4 and SY21 uh, earnings call, the first earnings call for the company. Uh, the call will be initiated with a brief management discussion on the earnings performance for the quarter and for the full year, followed by an interactive Q&A session. The management team here uh, are represented by Mr. Ravi Goenka, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Satej Nabar, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Harsh Vardhan Goenka, Executive Director, Business Development and Strategy, and Mr. Kartha Roy Chaudhary, Chief Financial Officer. Over to you, Mr. Ravi, uh, for the initial remarks. Uh, dear shareholders, good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you to the maiden earnings call of your company, Lakshmi Organic Industries Limited. As Ankur mentioned on this call, I am accompanied by Satej, Partha, and Hush. Although we may have had some fruitful discussions during the pre-IPO roadshows, this is our very first interaction after the successful listing of Lakshmi. We are overwhelmed by the trust the investing community has placed in us. And this makes us even more responsible to create value for the shareholders and live up to their expectations. As the proverbial saying goes, we are the new kid on the block and in the capital markets arena. We will take each step as an opportunity to learn while we share our experiences and views with you. Slowly but surely, we will get used to the subtle and the technical nuances of a wider accountability and trusteeship matrix. To say the least, it has been an unusual year. From the gloom and doom, when our Honorable Prime Minister announced the national lockdown on last uh, March 23rd, to the boom specifically the chemical sector in particular has seen in the last financial year. From disruptions in production and supply chain to the high traction in demand of the pharma and agrochemical markets, it has been quite a year. I can confidently say that it was only due to a committed and capable team that we could have achieved a near 100% production and sales volume. I truly believe that the two heroes of our company are our workforce at the factory sites. They have worked tirelessly and fearlessly in spite of all odds. Many kudos to them. Let me now shift gears to our financial performance. Our company has returned very healthy results, both on account of the market dynamics and the value growth in our specialty intermediate business, despite the continuing challenges of the pandemic. On our standalone results, year on year, the revenue grew by 18% to 1,616 crores, and the EBITDA grew by a handsome 69% to 212 crores. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the revenue grew by 37% to 471 crores, and an EBITDA of 59 crores. EBITDA margins year on year moved from 9% to 13%, and quarter on quarter, it moved from 8% to 13%. Year on year, our profit after tax grew by 56% to 123 crores on a standalone basis, and our EPS grew to rupees 5.4 from rupees 3.21 per share of a face value of rupees 2 each. On the cash flow and uh, capex, uh, standalone cash flow from operations, which is the profit after tax plus depreciation for the year, has been a healthy 168 crores. The total capex spent by the company during the year is of the order of 88 crores. The projects in both the SI and the AI are progressing well, and we are hopeful of capitalizing some of them during the current financial year. Although there has been some slowdown in the recent months due to the uncertainties and restrictions around the current resurgence and escalations of the pandemic. 
Let me come to the consolidated results. Year on year, our revenues grew by 15% to 1,773 crores, and the EBITDA grew by a handsome 87% to 221 crores. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the revenue grew by 34% to 521 crores, and the EBITDA grew by 211% to 65 crores. EBITDA margins year-on-year -year moved from 8% to 13%, and quarter-on-quarter -quarter it moved from 5% to 13%. This has been a year during which both the company and its subsidiaries return strong top and bottom lines. Year-on-year, -year, the profit after tax grew by 81% to 127 crores, and our EPS grew to rupees 5.59 from rupees 2.86 per share of rupees two each. We now have a much stronger balance sheet than ever before with a near zero debt, giving us a solid foundation for future growth. Today, we can see some light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. The cases have plateaued and the vaccination drive is catching pace. Assuming that this trend will continue, we expect a strong recovery in the macroeconomic activities than we previously assumed. It is my belief that the chemical sector will witness a huge capex cycle over the next decade, and I can assure you that Lakshmi will play a significant role in this space. Our capex for the current year are progressing fairly well and in spite of the pandemic restrictions in Europe and in India, we hope that these investments will realize significant benefits during the next financial year. In a nutshell, we have had a good year despite the challenges. Today, we have a robust business plan for the current financial year, and I am confident that our team will achieve and deliver results that are expected of them. I will now open the house for questions and answers me and my colleagues will be happy to take them. But last and not the least, I take this opportunity to wish you and your families a safe, healthy, and a prosperous year ahead. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and one again. And participants are kindly requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question comes from Madhav Math from Fidelity Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and congratulations on very strong numbers. Um, I just wanted to understand a very basic uh, uh, question. Uh, are, you know, margins have moved up quite a bit in fiscal 21 versus fiscal 20. Uh, I just wanted to understand the reason for the increase in the EBITDA margins. And if you could also help us understand if the margins have uh, increased has come from the asset intermediate or speciality or both. And if you could just uh, sort of break it down in terms of which one is sort of at uh, margin entry. Thank you. Harsh, you would go in or I, I'll go in? Partha, go ahead. So, Madhav, uh, <laughs> there has been an improvement in the margins, but the character of the margin improvement in both the verticals are different. While in the acetides, the margin grew on value term, in the specialty intermediate business, the margins, the absolute margins, grew on three counts. One is volumetric growth, two, change in the product mix, and three, uh, the pricing benefit that we have been able to achieve through the years, FY20. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the asset side, I didn't understand. Sorry, value terms means what exactly? 
The acetyls in value terms means it is not that we had any volumetric growth in acetyls, whereas we had volumetric growth in the specialty intermediate. So, acetyls, you think the uh, sorry, I'm just implying basically the pricing sort of helps the margin improvement basically. That's what you're saying. Yes, that is got the inherent nature of the business. Okay. Yeah. All right. And just one other follow-up. Um, uh, I frankly do not understand it very well, but uh, uh, right now, like you know, a lot of commodities are sort of benefiting from an improvement uh, in our margin improvement. Is there any element of uh, sort of margin for some of our products being at uh, high levels, which can correct uh, uh, in the coming sort of one or two years, or these are sustainable margins going ahead? No. Why is the margins in the acetyl intermediates could correct? But for the company as a whole, going uh, by the trajectory that we have chosen for ourselves, which is growth in the specialty intermediate segment, and the investments which are being made in that particular vertical, for the company as a whole, the margin profile, our assessment and our objective is to keep on improving that margin profile. Yeah? Okay, I'll come back in the case. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Rohit Nagaraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so the first question is on our uh, meeting acquisition. So uh, given that uh, the current circumstances and in terms of the logistics and COVID-related issues, so what are the timelines that we are looking at from you know, importing all the equipment, setting it on the ground, and probably starting the uh, initial trials and commercial production? Thank you. So I, I'll take that, Harsh. So, <clears throat> so in terms of the progress on the project, the, the activities of dismantling, packaging, logistics, etc., at our Italian site has restarted. There's about uh, a workforce of about 50 people on our Italian site who are working to, to this end. The first consignment will leave the Italian shores in the next uh, maybe two weeks time. So that is in terms of the dismantling and the logistics, uh, etc. In terms of the site work which is going on, in India, at our Lote Parsuram site, today we have a workforce of more than 150 working on the site. Nearly 50% of the construction work of the infrastructure is already completed, so that you know the, they are ready to receive the equipment, and there is no multiple handling of the equipment which come in. And uh, the orders, etc., for the long delivery items have been placed. In terms of our capitalization, we are still targeting a capitalization before the end of this current financial year. We are running that schedule. In terms of our R&D, the R&D activities have already started. Uh, about, I mean, uh, Okay, I, will, I wouldn't like to quantify, but some of the products have already been approved with the customers, with lab scale samples. We have sent the kilo lab samples, the kg level samples to the prospective customers, potential customers. The kilo plant is also being operational now. Uh, understood. Uh, thanks, thanks for the update on that front. Uh, so the second question, again, on the uh, specialty business. So here, in terms of the customer segment, uh, so what kind of customers are we targeting, and uh, how are the customers comfortable to come to us? I mean, probably they were with the lady and now coming back to an Indian player. So, what is the overall philosophy from that front? Thank you. I will leave this for uh, Harsh to answer, please, Rohit. Harsh. Yeah. So. Um, so actually, just before the lockdown was announced, we had some customers come and visit us from international places. So they were quite eager to. But we have to now obviously continue work virtually. 
in terms of our customer segments, as we mentioned earlier as well, that our strategy remains the same. The agro and the industrial blocks will become the first target customers. The pharma will follow suit since that requires a slightly longer qualification period. Uh, fair enough, sir. Uh, just a concurrent question to this. Uh, in terms of the validation, so generally, uh, once we start the plant operations and uh, we put out those initial batches, uh, how much time does it take to uh, uh, stabilize the product and to get it validated from our customer? Thank you. So, uh, I'll, I'll give you talk about pharma and uh, pharma separately. So, the agro part, we have already piloted products from a facility in India. That gives the customer a lot more comfort. And we believe that it will be a quarter to get all products qualified as they are produced at best to then, to then ramp up and reach full production on the agro side. Uh, the industrial side as well, we would say might be slightly longer depending on the detail of the exact product mix. Uh, that may be three to four months, but the pharma might take even longer depending on the life cycle and the documentation required as those customers need to physically visit our site. Uh, thank you so much, and that's it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question comes from Jignesh Kamani from GMO. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Mr. Partha, and hi, sir. The setup number. Uh, this one, the editor business, uh, right now, commodity cycle and the industry cycle is after the editor cycle. Any idea till what time the current margin is sustainable and uh, when you expect your margin to fall down in the editor business? I will take this question as. No, no, Jignesh. I was tempted, but go ahead, yeah. Jignesh, <laughs> <laughs> howsoever much we would like to know this, it is just not possible for us to have a have a uh, handle on that. But we are following the market very, very closely, closer than probably ever before. We are aware and we are quite uh, uh, alert to the impacts of these movements and we shall protect our positions and uh, continue to perform Jignesh. Yeah. And so I'll just, I'll just add, uh, Jignesh, as our overall strategy for our luxury remains unchanged. Uh, the African business can Hello. Hush, you dropped off. We missed, we, yeah, we missed you. Uh, are you there, Hush? So one minute, sir. Hush, your line got dropped. Let me reconnect him, sir. Participants, yeah. stay connected. Harsha. Yeah, Harsha, welcome back. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know some issue there. Uh, I was saying that uh, our strategy remains the same, Jignesh, where our asset business is the cash generating business, which will continue to perform and give cash irrespective of business cycle. We're not here to predict the cycles. But uh, what's in our control is the capexes and our growth in our specialty business. Uh, we are on track to perform in our specialty business and in our coordinated business by investing capital and driving existing product mix and profitability, which is clearly evident from the numbers we've posted for March 31st. Understood. And on the specialty chemical, uh, we were developing a couple of new products. Uh, any timeline for that and how is the process of approval from the customer and the volume from, from the new product? Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's a continuous cycle. Uh, as we mentioned in, during our last calls just before the IPO, we've already received some approvals at a pilot scale. Uh, one of the products will find a commercial impact uh, in this financial year. 
one of the products will be with the following year. But products that were piloted out in the last few years will be seeing a larger amount of sales already since they are reaching maturity stage. So I would not call it an impact of one or two products. I'd say it's actually a overall cycle of product development that is resulting in a growth. This is very evident as a lot of our new products are driven towards export-oriented markets like the US and Europe. Uh, our percentage of export share is already at 10% of our specialties, and we will see that significantly go up in the future. Sure. And my last question on the mission, though you elaborated on the progress, is there a risk that current uh, lockdown measurement that or are there plan of fourth quarter commencement might get delayed by three to six months? So, uh, Jigmeesh, uh, I would say that if the lockdown continues and we're not able to mobilize people, uh, I think that is the biggest risk we face. That's something not in our control. But even, for example, during the current lockdown, we have permission to operate and we have 150 people at site. We would want more people at site, but there are obvious uh, localized restrictions and interstate movement restrictions which sometimes curtails uh, that possibility. Thank you, Ivan. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Sachin Kasera from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and congrats for this set of numbers. Uh, I'm going to be coming, so pardon me if I'm asking some basic questions. Uh, sorry, to interrupt. sorry to interrupt, Sachin, sir. Your voice is breaking, sir. Can you please rejoin right. the queue, sir? Is it better now? Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my question was, sir, uh, are you giving any indication in terms of what type of volume we could see? Sorry to interrupt. So sorry to un interrupt again, sir. Your voice is still breaking. Please join back the queue for, okay, the, sure. for your question, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. So next question comes from Sadat Mehta from Foremost System. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, I had a question uh, about the strategy that you're following. From what I understand, that you want to focus on specialty intermediates and grow in that area, uh, possibly because they seem to be higher margins and they probably give a longer uh, lock-in with customers. Uh, if that is correct, or either way, could you suggest what might be the growth uh, percentage that you're seeing annually for the next two, three years uh, in terms of sales, and also what you expect in uh, percentage growth in PAT uh, annually over the next two, three years? Uh, can I take that, Harsh, or you want to go ahead? No, no, go ahead, okay. So, so uh, the the way to look at this is there are two businesses. In the exercise intermediates, the growth would be linear. Whereas in the specialty intermediates business, the growth is linked to the capexes that we put on the ground. So therefore, there will be a sharp jump and then it could plateau. Again, there would be a sharp jump. You know, it will move in 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 With steps. The capex. Okay. Yes, yes, in a way, right? And if you look at the path and you know the growth of the company and uh, you know how the network has grown over the last say ten years, uh, we would like to better that trajectory. But I repeat, we would like to better that trajectory. And in, I mean, as it is quite common in Indian specialty chemicals company, there would, would be uh, some quarters, maybe a year of flattishness, and then you will see, realize, see the realization of, of uh, the investment that we put on the ground. Yeah? I, I understand. So uh, are you also seeing any uh, traction uh, because of the China plus one strategy, uh, or is it uh, independent of this that you're uh, looking at the growth? And do uh, see if, if you could suggest some numbers on what is the likely growth averaged over, let's say, three years with this flat and then a sudden jump and then flat again and then a sudden jump because of the next apex. But let's say 
over three years or so, what uh, could we uh, expect in sales and in profits? So, I would like Harsh to take the first part of the question, Harsh. The second part I can come in. Or you can continue. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, in the China personal strategy, I think the entire chemical industry, the spectrum industry is there to benefit. And we are no exception to that. We clearly see two kinds of opportunities. One are direct products where we can make a product like for like. And two are where our customers are also getting that benefit. So for example, a particular API or a particular intermediate can only be made in China where we are seeing our customers now requesting for a, that product as well. So the entire value chain is really shifting out to India. So both of the benefits we are, we we'll definitely see a requirement of that, and we are seeing that uh, every year increasing. Also, you can take the second one. Yeah. So in terms of you know the trajectory, if one has to look at our revenue growth, our revenue has grown by about 13 to 15 percent CAGR. But we have been, over the last uh, uh, three or four years, we have been also focusing on profitable growth. Therefore, uh, we are trying to shift our EBITDA margin uh, more uh, towards, say, 15% plus as a, as a okay. mix, as a basket. So okay. while we continue to focus on the top line, I think our uh, we'll focus more on the EBITDA line as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you are suggesting that your profit, uh, your sale will grow at roughly 15% a year CAGR, the PAT would probably grow at 20 or 25% CAGR because of the greater focus on uh, higher margin products. Yeah, but I wouldn't comment on that. Huh? That that based on the conversation, you will have to sort of take a judgment call. Work huh? it out. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And and I do appreciate your focus on the higher profit products. I think that's really commendable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question comes from Manoj Garth from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, very good evening, and thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Uh, so, Mr. Partha, this question is for you. Like you alluded in your opening remark about growth in specialty business, uh, you know, both in terms of volume as well as value. So, would you be uh, able to give that split in terms of how much growth was being driven by volume and how much uh, with value? It is a it is a mix, Manoj. Okay, and there is a third element in this. Which is move, which is change in the product mix. So we have also moved in higher margin product. See our our base uh, intermediate is Daikatin, and mm -hmm. the profit margins are determined by the basket of products which uh, is supported or, or or the Daikatin which goes into which type of products, right? So there has also been a third element. And I would not really like to give further details on that, Manoj. We would like to sort of keep that, uh, yeah? Sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, got it. Got it. So it's volume mix as well as the value growth. Yes. In a side. Okay. So, yeah. The second question is on the uh, fluorinations. Uh, while you guys have indicated that you have already started, uh, you know, working on the on the pilot stage R and D as well as on the kilo labs, uh, uh, and with customer validation now and customer approval. But in terms of commercializing of those molecules, is it that we have to have a plant level kind of commercialization, or even like uh, some, you know? Uh, for some niche kind of uh, products, even the kilo uh, R&D lab uh, would, would probably fit the bill initially. Uh, till that time, we will be able to uh, commercialize the new plant in India. Uh, Harsh, I will take this yeah. and add. Oh. Yeah, sure. Uh, 
मनोज गिवेन दी करेंट चॉइस ऑफ प्रोडक्ट दैट वी हैव टेकन फॉर आवर सेल्स i mean uh, getting commercial output of some significant uh, nature i don't see that as a possibility but but the, the question that you have asked is something which we have in our minds at the back of our heads because we have a kilo lab okay maybe it will emerge in the next uh, uh, probably one quarter or so whether it is possible not possible uh, whatever yeah we have also gotten some intermediates from italy whether we can process and convert them into finished etc so uh, this is something which is under consideration but i don't think we can really pin our this thing on any significant numbers manoj harsh do you want to add something so well, i think that I, the way i understand manoj's question it was more on can we crunch the piloting to Uh, with respect to qualification with end customers of course that is an answer product by product and it's in our mind some products that are not as sensitive to the end customer customers may be open to it uh, depending also on the quality thresholds we are able to reach so it's a case by case basis and that remains on our radar sure and that is the last question for my side and the the general feedback which we have got uh, talking to the other peers in the in the chemical sector is that the scaling up of uh, fluorine chemistries uh, has its own challenges given uh, this is a very notorious chemistry uh, while we understand that uh, what we are getting from italy team is obviously uh, you know a four decade kind of an experience uh, and even those are the people who are likely to help us in terms of uh, scaling up uh, of of uh, this chemistry is going forward but in terms of our preparedness uh, if uh, we can understand that how are we thinking about this and uh, maybe if you can just give some colors in terms of uh, our preparedness for this sir yeah so many guys we had in said this in during our pre ipo calls our strategy to, oh, we are very very cognizant of this fact that scaling up fluorine chemistry and products is challenging Uh, so we've taken two approaches to secure ourselves on this. One, we have only taken on existing products which have been produced at Mitanni, where the technology is absolutely sacrosanct and proven. So that will ensure that there's a limited range of failure, if at all. Two, we are busy developing or remaking those products at a lab scale and at a pilot scale. before it hits commercial so that again ensures that the people working eventually in the plant are already comfortable with it and they can comfortable with the chemical the reaction the technology etc and third uh, is obviously the people so getting the italian here is one of the current challenges we face uh, which i am sure with the lockdown and with the time that will eventually open up Sure. Thank you very much for answering all the questions, and wish you all the best. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you, sir. Next question comes from Amar Maurya from Alpha Corate. Please go ahead. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is in terms of the dietary uh, or the specialty chemical. I mean, uh, what would be the current utilization level and by when we can see a uh, next round of kpeg given that now the crams is the area which we are targeting in a bigger way hello sure yeah yeah shall take that uh in terms of our specialty intermediate utilization uh, as it as i can mention that it's not really about utilization it's about product mix optimization and how do you go up the value chain so even if we have a rated capacity of 100000 tons a 1000 ton improvement can actually have a larger multiplier effect given uh, which part of the value chain we choose to play in so that would be that's the way we look at the business uh on your okay. second part 
uh, a second part with respect to capex i think the capex cycle is continuous we have we have more than 200 crores of capex which is which we which we raised in the ipo for our speciality so for the next 12 months there's clearly a large runway more capex is coming up is part of our story and as products are developed we will give those announcements and that clarity to you all in the future okay uh, if i can extend one more uh, related to the speciality uh, when we say that sir now we are targeting export primarily in the dietary chemistry and largely from the cram side so any early circuit success which we got into this sure so let me just clarify we don't do crams crams is contract research and manufacturing ours is more contract manufacturing the research actually we do by ourselves for ourselves so slightly okay. different connotations uh the we already had success or rather we been seeding these markets over the last few years so it's not a mm-hmm. uh, uh, last quarter or last six month initiative it was strategically done over time because getting access to international accounts has its own gestation period sometimes now uh, when you is trying to establish yourself uh, so it's been an effort of that and as the products have now matured from pilot reached a larger ton level production scale we are seeing larger revenues come out and you will see that in the, our next year or the next quarter where where our numbers towards the export will continuously go up again i will not say that's the only focus the focus remains contract manufacturing and of course the domestic market is also available for us to take it just depends on what we choose and how we choose to operate the business depending on the optimized product mix okay and sir in terms of the si uh, i mean today the 10% is the export uh, down the line two years uh, and then in terms of the si barring the fluorine what could be the export and domestic mix do i can't can give a projection of a number for obvious uh, overlooking reasons but i would say that we'll have significant growth due to the factors that i just mentioned okay got that thank you sir thank you sir next question comes from dhruv muchal from hdfc asset management please go ahead uh yeah thank you so much uh, uh, uh small clarification uh, in your presentation on slide um this is slide 10 you've given the capacity utilization numbers for the acetyl business i just wanted to understand this 84% for fy21 does it include the, uh, the is it at the 161 capacity 1000 ton capacity or is it at 200 201000 ton capacity I mean, I believe they required this one CPL. So, uh, is this considering the uh, the growth in capacity? And after that, this capacity number? Or? No, no, no. This is only for us. This is only for 161. Okay. Okay. So that will come next year. Got it. And um, uh, actually, uh, my second question was a bit related to the earlier one. Is it possible to say the like, for example, you have given it for acetyl business? the capacity utilization number for the society business also i understand a bigger part of growth is coming from product mix improvement but uh, just as some handy numbers for our, for our working uh, harsh should i take that yeah sir <laughs> the problem in this is we have common app producing multiple products what sorry, i told See, in that specialty intermediate business, we have common assets producing multiple products. Okay, and uh, so yeah, but I shall give you some indications, which is in the DRHP there are certain disclosures. That could be that is for about three and a half years, so that can give you some sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, you have both capacities and you have the current numbers, revenues. Mm-hmm. Got it. Probably try to look from the DRHP. 
And just one last uh, clarification on the numbers again is uh, you have shared the quarterly numbers for the SI business in terms of revenue for the full year and for the quarter. Now, if I just reduce, I mean, deduct the quarter four numbers for last year and for the current year from the full year numbers, basically looking at the nine month numbers for SI business, the numbers look to be flat. I mean, not flat, but uh, the growth is about eight or percent. Versus in fourth quarter, the growth is about 39 or percent. So, is there something which has come uh, particularly in the fourth quarter? Uh, and I mean, uh, is there some uh, one-off here, or how should we think of this? So, the nine. The point is, the nine-month growth in uh, SI business is about eight percent, versus fourth quarter growth is about 39 percent. Why? Why? Why this is? You want me to take that harsh? Sure, Bart. You can start. You can start off, okay. then I'll. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Drew, the answer is. See, we have had some. Uh, account, we we actually uh, got entry into certain accounts towards the end of the third quarter of the financial year. And those businesses started clocking in, in a way, in the fourth quarter. So, so when you compare quarter to quarter, this is uh, from where the incremental uh, growth is coming broadly. Okay. Now I leave to Hush to complete this. Yeah, also... Uh... A few of our products that were produced in that third quarter got stagnated given Europe's uh, own requirement and that got shifted and went out in the next quarter. So maybe that's just a shift of a little bit here and there. But principally what Partha said is the primary reason where our new account openings and our calendar year sort of contracts have kicked in, which is why you're seeing that increase. Okay, so that's a bit interesting because uh, should we expect a higher growth because uh, the fourth quarter base uh, gives a, uh, uh, and the point is a large significant part of growth has come in the fourth quarter, uh, which you suggest is coming from new businesses. So uh, should we expect a, a strong momentum here for the next, uh, for the next year also as this kind of closely? See, it would be a forward-looking statement to comment on this. So, why, why, I mean, you wait for another two months, you will be able to correlate. We'll come up with the Q1 numbers as well. Right? Mm, okay, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Sachin Kaseria from Swan Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question was regarding YCPL. Are you sharing the number for FY21 for YCPL? No. They will get consolidated after we complete the acquisition. So we will do the consolidation in the H2 of the current financials. Okay, no, but just for since it's a large acquisition for us, can you give us some indication what type of revenue a bit of profit does YCPL enjoy? It is doing well. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Second question was on the uh, slide number 20, 22, I think, of the presentation, wherein uh, the asset turnover ratio has uh, gone down from 1.8 to 1.2. And in the call, you mentioned that our focus is, you know, more on profitable and higher value products. So what could explain the fact that while we are moving into more specialty and value the asset turnover has gone down from 1.8 to 1.2, sir? So, it is basically uh, a, a, the denominator is the total of the asset side of the balance sheet. That is how one looks at it. So our balance sheet is heavy because we have uh, substantial cash on the balance sheet. That is point number one. Point number two is capitalization is going on. Okay. Our capex outflow is of the order of about 78, 80 crores during the year, and it is going to continue. That is what is actually depressing the asset turn. If we go to adjust the asset turn for cash on balance sheet in CWIT, will we be looking at a stable number of 1.8 sort of number? You will, you will see an improving number. 
on on a net block basis because we have about 45 46 crores of depreciation load sure sure yeah yeah and so just one question on the margin front most of the uh, you know chemical companies which are like you doing more of specialty and value rate over a period of time uh, the margins tend to be in plus of 20 22% so over a two three year journey, once this uh, integration of YCP happens and this fluorination starts to kick off, are you also on that journey where in over a bit of next two to three years maybe your margins could be in the range of 20-22 percent average return margin? Harsh, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, sure. So uh, two comments. Uh, first is uh, our specialty business and fluorine business are indeed in the top quartile of industry, specialty industry profitability. So that is very clear. These businesses have about four to 500 crores of capex going on within them. And they would therefore do grow. And more capex will come later, and we'll talk about that maybe in the quarters to come. However, on the acetyl side, which remains the uh, cash generating focus business of ours and does not require a lot of capital. It's an extremely capital light business model. That is the business where we are not saying that we will degrow. We want to keep up market share. So the balance of the two, you definitely come up with a much higher percentage since the capex is being driven towards the speciality kind of product ranges and business types. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question comes from Prasenjit Bhuya from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir, for the opportunity. So my question is on your presentation A, where you mentioned that you have developed five different chemistry platforms. So could you elaborate what kind of chemistry platforms these are and what kind of growth opportunities we are seeing in this uh, chemistry platform? Yeah, sure, Prasanji. So these chemistry platforms have actually, uh, just, just to take a little bit back in time, when we got the acquisition from Clarion, we were just manufacturing eight, nine products. Now we have scaled up to 35 products, 37 products. This, to get to these and to move up the value chain, we have to add on different chemistries which allow you to make more complex molecules. And some of these are already being commercialized as you're seeing them in the last quarter. Some of them are driving, are where they're putting up more and more capexes which will be driven in the next financial year. So that is how we're expecting this to grow. And given that you're basic chemistry basket has broadened by definition the num your addressable market has increased therefore the possibilities increase it's more a question of which area of the intermediate space do you want to play in sure sure and so if i see your major focus is on specialty intermediate so just to understand how the growth opportunities are coming so since you already have 55 percent domestic market share so are we moving to more new kind of products in specialty intermediate or the end market is still going very fast that we see lots more opportunities in this particular segment? Can you throw some more light on specialty intermediate growth opportunities? Sure. So two, two, two basic trends. Uh, of course, the local market is available to available there for us to take, Prasanji. And international market as well, you're seeing the China plus one approach. So given that we are they are not many players of this chemistry range and this chemistry value chain or as integrated value chain as Lakshmi, many companies are now, or many customers want to buy and secure their, themselves by partnering with us, which is what's driving growth in both of these. And new molecule development or new product development is a parallel activity irrespective of uh, these two previous points. Sure. Thank you, Thank you, sir. So next question comes from Ram Moti from Prabhudas Leladar. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me, sir? 
see arrow yes really very audible but i just wanted to know what would be a total outlay for this chloro specialty chemical business currently uh, so 250 to 270 crores is where we're expecting the photo business capex to be at so net picture to and this would uh, as you guided it will get commission by last last quarter of this financial year that's right and uh, just lastly sir uh, would the floro specialty that uh, chemical co with it uh, set turnover would be similar to a company uh, set turnover or it will be better or lower so the floro business at the uh, peak can you yeah at peak uh, peak turnover would be between 1.3 to 1.1 in that range 1.1 to 1.3 but margins will be far more better hello yes 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 indeed okay and uh, just last question from my side uh, what would be the capex for this year sir for fy22 for us overall for, for the full company could i take that ask yeah patu <laughs> It 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 should be of the order uh, uh, order of about three hundred crores. And lastly, sir, will this capex intensity continue in the same pace as you said that you know our growth uh, in both SI as well as specialty four of floro is based on you know how much we invest into assets. So will we continue to maintain the pace or is it will be a step up of growth kind of thing? Yes, it is going to be. a step up approach yeah oh, oh okay okay thank you lot for uh, answering my question thank you thank you sir next question is from bala murli krishna an individual investor please go ahead yeah yeah um, i have one query in this at the end of the employee benefit expense was quite a uh, high this quarter uh, could you please elaborate on that one yeah the employee benefit expense is higher because it has taken the esop cost which is been uh, given to the leadership team and uh, some of the other important members uh, of our managerial staff the second point is given the uh, strong results the incentives or year end variable pay for the entire company has been at a substantially higher level than the last year they have all been booked in this quarter so a better way to look at this line expenditure line item is to see the year on year figures number 1 and number 2 going forward we shall try and equalize this number quarter over quarter uh in the coming years yeah thank you sir thank you thank you sir next question comes from sunil jain from nirmal bank securities please go ahead yeah uh good evening sir and the congratulations on good number uh sir there is a trading purchase and sale side in that so uh, excluding that uh, uh what could be the margin or how is the margin in trading the business the trading business has trading margins so on an average if you take about say 3% or so on that trading purchase you will arrive at the trading turnover okay so the core business could have higher margin yes what is okay okay thanks sir great thank you very much that was the question thank you sir Next question comes from Mithul Patel from India Infoline Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking my question. So regarding the the, the employee costs and the stock options etc. So can you with 35 crores on a consolidated basis uh, this quarter? So if you can quantify this in terms of how much of the ESOP, so we can sort of do our adjustments. Uh, which perhaps won't be recurring every quarter going forward. Uh, so, or is this a target that we should assume for the full year uh, with some inflation? Uh, 
परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कंपनी एंड स्ट्रेंगनिंग ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट टीम स्ट्रेंगनिंग ऑफ द वर्क फोर्स it will uh, actually experience some escalation if you look at our employment cost it is uh, uh, very low compared to any other uh, specialty company so this is an element or a line item which may continue to grow in future slightly ahead of the growth in the overall fixed costs yeah sure sure thank you Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Yash Raj, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, and congratulations on strong numbers. Uh, I also appreciate that the company is progressing, uh, looking at margin accredited products going forward. Uh, I would appreciate if you could uh, please share the capacity utilization levels and its trajectory right across, you know, uh, the plans of Lotus Pulse Ram, which is going to come in future. Like over a two-year period, utilization levels. If you can project that, and the existing uh, plant 84 percent, it is more or less stagnant for the last two three years in the 84 percent range. So, just from a investor call in Zealand and Indonesia, one of our competitors, it has been highlighted that they have entered directing directors, directors. So, any impact? Uh, the other two questions I have. Thanks. Harsh, you may take them. Sure. So, um, Yash, I just mentioned the capacity utilization uh, was clearly a bit impacted last year in the asset types because of the lockdowns that we that were there. Uh, but we clearly have more capacity coming on stream with the acquisition of YCPL. Uh, with regard to the speciality, as mentioned before, it's primarily we don't look at. uh capacity utilization we look at really product mix optimization to drive our strategy and the third part of your question on jubilant in gravia uh irrespective of competition coming into the market our strategy remains the same uh we are very very clear on our position as value chain leaders as product mix leaders in the dietitian space uh our various kinds of businesses within this bucket enable us to continue to remain leaders as such uh that's all i would like to comment for now thank you uh, i will look forward to you know maybe a 20% appreciation in terms of revenue going forward and maybe stabilization of 16% margins uh, on a reasonable level thank you take care thank you sir Next question comes from Devesh Kail from Aiden Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So I have uh, two housekeeping questions. Uh, first is, uh, what is the power and fuel cost uh, for the uh, type twenty one? Oh my God. We will have to check that. But my total utility bill should be of the order of about seventy eighty crores for the full year. Okay. But last year we had 90 crores. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Then it will be higher because of the capacity utilization. Okay. And second is uh, on the tax rate. So we have been uh, having a uh, 20% tax rate over past two years. So what's the uh, uh, rate or uh, rate we are looking for on the tax rate on the tax side going forward for the next two years? very similar maybe it can go up by maybe 1% each of the year yeah okay okay so that's it from my thank you yeah. thank you sir next we have a follow up question from rohit nagraj from sunidhi securities thank you please go ahead sir yeah uh, thanks for the follow up sir 
Uh, sir, so we have mentioned that uh, we have two R&D sites, one in India and Italy. So is it predominantly to be a nearer to the customer or uh, probably just now we have start, we'll be starting with the uh, new commissioning of the plant and then probably it will take time to stabilize. Once it is stabilized, probably we'll move back the Italy R&D to India. So what is the thought process on this? First, sure. Yeah, so, so Rohit, as you know, uh, getting R&D to a full profitable scale takes its time. So we are actually looking at delinking between what goes on in India, manufacturing and R&D startup in Italy. So R&D startup would actually happen maybe three to six months before the plant is fully operational in India. And uh, the, our Italian colleagues will continue working on what they were when they left. Of course, refreshing and updating themselves with respect to market. But uh, with that caveat aside, we're looking, we are eagerly looking to start up our Italian R&D zone. Uh, understood, sir. Uh, so, and just one clarification. Uh, so, Parthas uh, mentioned that uh, this year's APEX will be about 300 crores. Uh, so, this is excluding the investment in Mitteni, which you have mentioned about 100 crores, uh, right? No, it is including. It is including. Okay, so already we have uh, done 100 crores investment in uh, Mitteni, and incrementally yeah. 200 crores uh, will be spent uh, during this year. Uh, uh, as an overall feature. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That will be the last question for the day. I would now like to hand over the conference to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everybody. It has been a pleasure to be here with you today and uh, answer to your questions to the best of our abilities. I do hope uh, that we will continue to grow our businesses and uh, definitely it will be our endeavor to ensure uh, that your expectations of us are fully met. Thank you again for your patience and for your very insightful questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank Eight. you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may disconnect your lines now. Thank you, and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Your conference is no longer being recorded.